recently we have been talking about uh, first order LTI circuits. In particular, we, uh, we saw how to deal with circuits, uh, first order circuits, with, uh, well, where there is no input, okay, so the response was due only to the initial stored energy in the dynamic component, and that we studied under the title zero input response. We also saw zero state response where the initial condition or the initial stored energy in the dynamic component uh, was zero and the response was due only to the external excitation the, uh, due to voltage of the independent voltage source or the current of the independent current source or sources in the circuit. Okay. And uh, in this lecture we will now start considering the general case where we allow both the input and the initial condition to be uh, now zero. Okay, so that we study under the title complete response. Okay, so both the input and the initial condition is allowed to be uh, different than zero. Let's your initial condition. Okay, so we will develop this uh, the, the approach to deal with the complete response over some simple examples. Okay. In fact, uh, dealing with complete response is not really any different than dealing with the uh, zero state response. Okay. So this is our first example, consider the following circuit with a single capacitor. Okay. We have one dynamic component, therefore this is the first order circuit. 3 ohm, 6 ohms, this is a constant source, 6 volts, and the capacitance is 0.5 Parts. This is the capacitor voltage, and initially the capacitor voltage is 2 volts. And what we're asked for is VCT for uh, future times, the capacitor voltage for T greater than equal to 0. For T positive. Okay. So, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to uh, obtain the French equation describe, describing the evolution of the first voltage. Okay. And then we have the initial condition constraint. So and then we're gonna figure out <coughs> the solution that satisfies both the differential equation constraint and the initial condition constraint. Okay. And the differential equation would have a non-zero right hand side because the input is non-zero. We have uh, we have some input in the circuit. So that right hand side will determine the type or the form of the particular solution. And then we will just kill the right hand side and look at the differential equation on the left hand side and that will tell us the form of the homogeneous solution. Okay. Particle solution we find directly from the differential equation and uh, we combine the particle solution and the homogeneous solution and at that point homogeneous solution will uh, Harbor an unknown, and when we write down the complete solution as the particle solution plus homogeneous solution, at that stage we apply the initial condition constraint to figure out the last unknown uh, that was part of the homogeneous solution. And with that unknown computed, everything will become known, okay? and we will have obtained the solution. Okay. So the first step, therefore, is obtaining the differential equation. And for that, it's maybe a good idea to simplify the circuit, if we can, a little bit. And in this case, we can do that. All we have to do is just replace this one port seen by the capacitor by its feminine equivalent uh, circuit. And in that case, we have a much simpler topology. And using that topology, it's quite straightforward to write down the differential equation. OK, so this is one way to go. So this is the one port 
seen by capacitor. Okay. A, B, and here we have R capacitor. Okay. 3 ohm, 6 ohm, and 6 volt. So let's obtain the thermal equivalent for this one port. Okay, so this should equal to the following simpler one port. A voltage source connected in series with an LTI resistor. Now, this voltage source or voltage of the voltage source equals, we know, that the open circuit voltage. Okay, if this if the port is left open circuited, then here we have six volts, two volts will appear here, and the remaining four volts will appear there, okay, by a simple voltage distribution. So that means the open circuit voltage is four volts, hence this R feminine voltage is four volts. How about the feminine resistance? Kill the source. This is an independent source, therefore killing it means replacing it with a short circuit. Then if you in that case, 3 ohm and 6 ohm, they become parallel. The equivalent resistance is 2 ohms, and that is our feminine resistance. Okay. So 6 and 3 parallel, that's our feminine resistance too. Therefore, as far as the capacitor or capacitor voltage is concerned, there is no difference between this circuit Okay, there's no difference between this circuit and this circuit, okay, as far as the capacitor voltage is concerned. So now we're going to consider this circuit under the initial condition, VC0 equals. You will easily obtain the differential equation, and then we will move forward from there. Is obvious, and once you have those two pieces of information, you can just break right down the equation. Okay, but for the sake of completeness, let's do it in the following way. So let's write down KVL in this loop, sum all the voltages, and equate to zero. And once we write that equation, we want to rewrite it in terms of our formulation value, which is capacitor voltage. And by doing that, we will have obtained the differential equation describing the evolution of. As voltage. Okay, by KVL we have the sum of three voltages equals zero. Okay, suppose we go in clockwise direction. So we have minus four volts, and then we have this two. Okay, two times the resistor current IR, but resistor current is capacitor current also IC, and IC is from the thermal equation. C D E C. Okay. So C is one half, and we have D E C. Okay. Minus four plus two times the current plus the capacitor voltage must equal zero. Okay. Note that this equation is only in terms of V C, and also we have a constant term due to the non-zero input, and this is what we want. All we have to do now is to rearrange the terms so that our differential equation looks prettier. So simplifying that yields dvc plus bc equals for this is our differential equation. Okay, so that's one of the constraints to be satisfied by the best voltage. The other constraint is sitting right here, initial condition constraint. Okay. Now when we have uh, a differential equation, non homogeneous differential equation, that is, the right hand side is different than zero. What we do is, or how we approach the problem is, we write, we say we, uh, the, the solution has two parts, the homogeneous solution and the particle solution. Particle solution is determined by 
or the form of the particle solution is determined by the form of the right hand side and the particle solution. Once you have the form, it's determined by uh, the differential equation directly. Okay? Particle solution has nothing to do with the initial combination. And then we ignore the right hand side, we have homogeneous differential equation, and for that we have a homogeneous solution. And once we have a homogeneous solution and a particle solution, we combine the two. And finally, to that combination, we apply an initial condition constraint, which will give us the unknown that appears when we first write the homogeneous solution. So, homogeneous solution, let's call it VHT, okay, is some constant times e to the natural frequency times t and the natural frequency for this left hand side is minus one okay so we have minus t so that's our homogeneous solution k is at this point unknown and particle solution vpt equals the right hand side is constant therefore the form of particle solution will also be constant Okay, and then let's say that constant is A, and then you take that candidate and put it into the differential equation. The particle solution should satisfy the differential equation. If you have a constant candidate, this dvc time derivative of that constant okay, goes away because it's zero, and then what we have is vp equals 4 or a equals 4. Therefore, the particle solution must be 4. Okay, and then you combine these two pieces to form the complete solution, VCT equals 4 plus K e to the minus T. Okay. And then finally, we have to figure out this K. And we do that by applying the initial condition constraint, VC0 equals 2 volts. At, okay, plug in t equals 0, this becomes 1, so k plus 4 must equal 2. Therefore, k must equal minus 2. Hence, VCT, the complete solution is 4 minus 2 e to the minus t. Okay. So this is the unique solution that satisfies simultaneously the initial condition constraint and the differential equation. Okay. Now let's Resolve the problem using a little bit different approach. Note that we're familiar with superposition from LTI resistor circuits, and in our last lecture, in our previous lecture, we saw that superposition extends nicely to the dynamic LTI dynamic circuits. Okay? One of the consequences of superposition or the existence of superposition is that we can Given the situation, we can figure out the zero input response and then separately we can figure out the zero state response and the complete response will be some of uh, those two uh, separate independent responses. Okay, so superposition or, uh, right, we can superpose those two separate solutions to obtain the complete solution. Linearity allows us to do that. So let's do that and uh, verify that we obtain the same result. By the way, you never forget like the, the units. Okay. By the way, right? Always make sure you write down the units. Okay, so another approach. Is the following. Let's do it by superposition. Find zero state response. Okay, let's go with V Z S T. And by, zero, by finding zero state response, what we're going to do is we're going to assume that the capacitor is initially uncharged. Okay, the initial capacitor voltage is zero. And then <coughs> that means. Dvc plus Vc equals 4. 
That doesn't change at all the differential equation. It's still we have the same differential equation, but the initial condition constraint is now different. Now we're considering Vc0 equals zero. Still the approach is the same. Now the k will be different. And then you figure out the solution. And the solution that you figure out will be <coughs> the zero state response. And what we will have is V0 state T equals. The only difference is here in the last step, instead of applying V0 equals 2 constraint, we apply V0 equals 0. At T equals 0, this is K plus 4. If K plus 4 is 0, then K must be minus 4. Therefore, zero state response is 4 minus 4 into the minus T. Four. And then step 2. Find the zero input response. Okay, let's call V Z I P. In this case, you will kill the source. Killing the source will remove the right hand side and you will have an homogeneous differential equation. Okay. So D V C plus V C equals zero. But this time you keep the Initial condition constraint V0 equals 2 volts. Okay. Since we have no right hand side or zero right hand side, we don't have to worry about the particle solution. Particle solution is zero. Okay. We only have the homogeneous solution, which is k e to the minus t. And then this should satisfy the initial condition constraint, which automatically tells us that k must be 2. Therefore, V0 input equals 2 into the minus T volt. Okay. And the linearity of the circuit allows us to sum those two separate solutions and claim that that sum equals the complete solution, okay? where both the uh, input and initial condition are present. VCT equals VZST plus VZIT. Okay. And this plus step gives us 4 minus 2 e to the minus T equals as expected. The same, same answer. So this can be taken as second second approach, and yet there is another approach, third approach, which is a little bit more practical. So some of you may like it more than the previous two approaches. Okay, yet another approach. Okay. Now we're going to develop this approach over a general framework. And that framework clearly uh, contains uh, our example that we considered here. Now, this is the situation. We have a circuit, a first order circuit. Okay? So a capacitor or an inductor that's connected to uh, the rest of the circuit, which is a one port. And that one port contains only LTI resistors and Suppose constant sources, okay. and even perhaps dependent sources. Okay, so this is resistive one port. AB with constant sources. Okay, constant voltage, independent voltage sources, or constant independent. Sources. So let's call this one port, one port N. Okay, and to this, suppose we have a dynamic component connected. Okay. So let's do it for a capacitor, and then as an exercise, you can do it for, uh, for an inductor. With capacitor C, and suppose that we try to figure out the capacitor voltage. And we C0 is given to be something. 
So this was two moles in the previous example. Okay. Now what's VCT? So let's write down what uh, what we know about the situation. So, what do we know? Well, we know the form of the differential equation. Okay. Because it's the only dynamic component here, the form of the differential equation will be the left hand side will be a first order, and the right hand side will be uh, constant because we have only constant source. Okay, so what we have is dvc plus something times vc, and that something is 1 over the time constant, 1 over rc constant in this case, vc, and that equals constant. And we know the form of the solution for such a case. We have a homogeneous part, we have the particle part, the particle part is itself a constant. So, form of the solution is VCT must be by some constant plus some other constant, e to the minus T over the final constant. Okay, so let's call this piece of information one. And let this one board N, okay, that to which the capacitor is connected to, is equal to the thermally cold circuit as such. So this is thermal resistance, or you can call it the input resistance, okay, seen from the port terminals. And this guy here is the open circuit voltage, okay, or this one. That is when we remove the capacitor and let the ports, uh, let the terminals be open circuit. Then you measure a voltage, and that voltage is called the open circuit voltage. Okay, and let's call this. Piece of information two. Okay. Now, by looking at one and two, we will be able to figure out the solution. And figuring out the solution, since we know it's four, means figuring out these three unknowns A, B, and R. So, next question, therefore, is how to find those unknowns A, B, and R. So, one implies the following. Assuming that we're working with passive capacitor and passive LTI resistors, this tau is positive. Okay? So that means, regardless of what B is and regardless of what tau is, as long as it's positive, as time goes on for T quite large, this term will go to zero. Okay? So, VC infinity must therefore be A. So one implies that V C infinity equals A. Okay, A is unknown. And then two implies what? Now, as far as capacitor is concerned, the original circuit or this circuit, they are the same. Here we have a capacitor, okay? And this is constant, okay? So this circuit will reach DC state state. At DC state state, the capacitor behaves like an open circuit. Okay. Therefore, at t equals infinity, the voltage across the terms of capacitor must equal the open circuit voltage here, or the telemetry voltage. Therefore, we see infinity by looking at the telemetry coolant circuit must be the open circuit. Okay. 
So A equals this, this equals the open circuit, therefore A must equal the open circuit. So A is unknown, but the open circuit is known because the circuit is known. Hence, we have figured out A equals the determinant voltage of the one port uh, that the capacitor is connected to or the open circuit voltage. Okay, so A is figured out. How about B and tau? Tau is easy. Again, C. And in this, for this case, we know that the time constant is simply this resistance times the capacitance. Okay. Therefore, tau equals R in times C. Both R in and C, they are known. And through this product, we figure out what tau is. Okay? A and tau figure out what remains is B. And for that, we have to use something that we haven't used yet, and that was the initial condition constraint. Again, 1 implies the form of that solution, implies A plus B, which is the value of Vc at t equals 0, because at t equals 0, regardless of tau, this becomes 1, and we have A plus B as the initial condition of the capacitor. Equals Vc 0. Therefore, B must equal Vc. 0, okay, minus A, and A was DC infinity, okay, DC sets the value of the capacitor voltage. In other words, B must equal V0, which is given, and V open circuit, which we can compute from the, uh, from the one point that the capacitor is connected. So that's another way to uh, figure out the solution or the solution for the capacitor, provided that the, uh, the sources within one port the capacitor is going to do are constant. Okay. Now, it would be a nice exercise to work out the case, the dual case, where we have an inductance instead of a capacitor. In that case, it might be uh, wiser to work with the uh, not on equivalent circuit instead of the feminine equivalent circuit. Okay, now let's see another example. So we have the following topology. We have a constant current source, two LTI resistors, and a capacitor. And what we're asked is capacitor voltage. Now we have two switches. Okay. The first switch opens at T equals zero. Okay. And one of the uh, things that the first switch tells us is that the initial capacitor voltage is zero because initially the switch is closed that means the terminals of the capacitor is short circuited so the initial capacitor voltage is zero and then and this guy is also open and the switch uh, opens and then what happens is this 10 amp current is forced through the capacitor and the 6 ohm resistor okay for a while this 3 ohm Resistor is out of the picture. It's uh, decoupled from the rest of the circuit. Okay. 
Now this time was not what's going to happen is initially the capacitor is uncharged, but due to the uh, current coming from this current source, it will charge and will be raising to some constant value okay, as time goes on. But things change at some intermediate time. Okay, at t equals two seconds, that switch closes. And then what happens is what we have to figure out after what happens after that switch closes. So what we have to do is we have to do piecewise analysis. First, we're going to study the interval from t equals 0 to t equals 2. And then we're going to study uh, the interval from t equals second, second to t toward t equals infinity. OK. So let's start our solution. First we consider this interval, t between 0 and 2 seconds. Now, for this interval, we can forget about this 3 ohm resistor because yet the switch is open and then this switch is uh, open and that, therefore we have this current source, the capacitor and the 6 ohm resistor are in parallel connection. So we're going to consider this circuit. Okay, we're going to figure out VC, where the capacitor is initially uncharged. And that information we get from the uh, switch. Okay, so initially the switch is closed, and for the capacitor short circuit. Now, so KCL tells us that, okay, so this gun must equal the capacitor 100 plus the current through the 6 ohm resistor. Okay. So what we have is one third dBc. Okay, C dBc is the capacitor current by C. Plus we have the resistor current, which is Vc over 6 because capacitor voltage and resistor voltage are the same. Plus Vc over 6 must equal the current coming from the source. That gives us dVc plus one half Vc equals 30. Okay. So therefore, for this interval from t equals 0 to 2, we have the following initial condition and the following differential equation. And we know how to write down the solution. So let's do that. Vh t is k e to the minus t over 2. That we get from the differential equation. And V particular is right hand side constant, plug in constant here. This goes away, so 1 half times V particle equals 30. Or that equals, uh, then V particle is 60. Okay. Incidentally, V particle is uh, it's, is the, uh, the DC state, state voltage of the capacitor. Okay, DC state, state capacitor is fully charged and it's open circuit. That means all the current 10 amps is flowing over 6 m, uh, 6 ohm resistor. That generates 60 volts, and that's what you see at T equals infinity, and which is our particle solution. Okay, and then combine the two, we have. Vc t equals 60 plus k e to the minus t half. To that, we apply the initial condition constraint, which tells us that k must be minus 60. So that equals 60 minus 60 e to the minus t over 2 volts. Okay. We apply the initial condition constraint. 
So this is the solution, starting from zero, not toward, not until infinity, okay? Because something changes regarding the circuit. That switch closes, and once that switch closes, what changes is the diffraction equation, okay? Because the time constant changes. So what we're going to do with that for is we're going to close that switch, obtain the new differential equation, and solve that. Okay? But also, not only the differential equation, we also need the new initial condition. And by the new initial condition, we mean the value of Vc, capacitor voltage, just before the switch is closed. Okay? And that information we can get it from our solution that's valid in this interval from 0 to 2. So let's do that. Let's uh, collect that initial condition information at t equals to minus e c two e c two equals sixty one minus. Well, we plug plugging t equals two here, so you have sixty minus sixty times one over e, and this is our initial condition okay at the second initial time at t equals two this is about 40 volts okay now let's consider the case for t larger than or equal to two now this switch is open at t equals zero and at t equals two this switch closes therefore four times larger than, uh, or later than, uh, to t equals two seconds, what we have is this guy, uh, the capacitor in parallel, and we have six and three ohms that are parallel. Okay. Now, six and three ohms parallel can be represented by a single equivalent resistor with resistance two. Hence, for t larger than two, we have to consider this circuit. Plus minus VC one third front, and this is six parallel three two ohms. Okay, and what's the initial condition? First, what's the initial time? Initial time is now t equals two seconds, and initial condition is 38 volts, which we can apply V2. seen by the capacitor has changed, therefore the time constant has changed. Time constant has changed means the, uh, the capacitor voltage will evolve at a different rate. Okay. So this is the differential equation. The homogeneous solution is k e to the minus 3 over 2 T minus two. Okay. We write T minus two here uh, for simplicity in computations. We don't have to do that. We can just leave it as T. And then of course this K will be a different K. But nevertheless, both approaches will take us to the same answer. Okay, so let's write the homogeneous solution as such some constant times that E to the natural frequency times T minus two. And natural frequency is minus 1.5. And part of the solution okay, is going to be a constant. So 3 over 2 times the constant equals 30, therefore the part of the solution is 20 volts. Okay, 
and the sun gives us a whole solution. VCT equals 20 plus K e to the minus Q over 2 e minus 2. Okay. And that equals 20 plus V2 minus 20 e to the minus Q over 2 T minus 2. Therefore, K must be V2 minus 20, where V2 is the value of Vc, our new initial condition at T equals to, it's about 38 volts. Okay. So here we apply the new initial condition constraint. Therefore, that nothing changes afterward. Uh, in the circuit. Hence, we have now the solution. Solution for the interval from 0 to 2 and then the solution later than t equals 2. And combining two pieces, we have the overall solution starting from 0 toward infinity. So let's gather them. Hence, Vct equals, or can be written in this piece by form, 60 1 minus e to d minus t over 2 holds for t between 0 and 2. Okay. And then for times larger than 2, we have 20 plus v2 minus 20 e to d minus t over 2 t minus 2 volts for t later than 2 seconds. Okay. Now let's sketch VCT to see better what's going on. So what happens is the capacitor starts with this behavior. Okay, so it's starts at zero and it's converging if nothing changes. It wants to converge to 60 because as time goes on, this exponential term becomes smaller and smaller. Therefore, VCT is starting from zero, it's rising toward 60. Okay, so this is let's call this 60. This is what we expect if the second switch, uh, this is what we would have expected if the second switch had not closed, okay, or right, had not closed. And then what happens is the second switch closes. And therefore, the circuit changes with it, the behavior of capacitor voltage also changes. Therefore, from t equals 2 onwards, this part is no longer what we expect. Okay. Instead, what happens now is we are at t equals 2, we are at the voltage V2, which is about 40 volts, and then we're heading toward where as time goes on, this becomes smaller and smaller, this exponential term. Therefore, this term will disappear, and Vc is converging toward 20 as t goes to infinity. Hence, the behavior will be something like that. Okay. Rises up to 38 volts and then converges toward 20 volts uh, as time goes to infinity. 